Hi everyone and welcome to another lesson on Digital Workshops Opus Pro. Today we'll be looking at HTML5 web video. So we start by creating a new HTML5 publication. And let's give it a name, just come up with something simple such as web video. And we add a standard Opus video object to the page. And we go to the video tab. Now if you've used Opus Professional Video before you'll notice this tab looks slightly different and the reason for that is that we now have the option to pick two video formats. This is because current browsers haven't quite decided which video format we're going to be using. The primary format will be MP4 and here we have the NASA MP4 file of the Digital Workshop website. So as this format is supported by most browsers and most devices we'll always choose that one. If however you need to ensure a wider range of coverage you need to pick a secondary format and today we're going to be using WebM. Now the show control options would display the standard HTML5 video object play, pause, seek bar, etc. on the video, but we don't want to use that today, so we're going to leave it unselected. And we also don't want the video to start automatically if that feature is supported by the device, so I'm going to unselect that. I'm going to give my video a simpler name, I'm just going to call it V1, and I'm going to make sure it's centered in the page. Now, as I said, if we were to publish this now, all we would have is a snapshot of the video on the HTML5 page, and there would be no way of controlling it. So we need to add some functionality, and I'm going to just do this via a button. Add a standard Opus button, and to that, add the standard Opus script action. And we start with V1, the name of our video object and instead of just telling it to play what we first have to do is we have to actually get hold of that HTML5 video object that is on the page and we do that using a function that is available from version 9.6 of Opus and above and that is the video element function then we have access to all the standard HTML5 video object functions and properties and a list of those can be found on this website a link which will appear at the bottom of this video information and we are going to be using the play and the pause functions today so we add play and it's a function now you may have noticed that play was converted to a capital P but we actually want the function play with a small p because that is the function used by the HTML5 video object so make sure you change that or this won't work and I'm just going to go to OK I'm going to give the button a name so we know what it does and I'm going to name it over here as well now normally in Opus Pro we would click the preview button but and I can't stress this enough if you are using HTML5, you should always publish and preview in a browser. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And I'm going to stick it into a folder I've already got created called Web Video. I'm going to use the standard publishing options. And I have the log output enabled. And I can see from that that the entire thing is published without errors. So we can go ahead. Let's open up the file and it's in that folder and as you can see the two video formats have copied across we have the standard fallback for no HTML5 browser we have the standard digital workshop JavaScript file and we have our published HTML file which I'm going to load into the browser today I'm using Firefox we have the screenshot of the actual video and we have our play button on screen which if we click it should play the video. 2014 was the hottest year on record. The last... As we have no way of stopping the video we've had to close the web page. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a way to stop that video. Control D to duplicate my button. 
change the title of the button to pause <coughs> change that over there as well and then I'm just going to right click and change the action again make sure keep the small p and we'll put pause into there publish this time we can simply quick publish it and go back to our folder and rerun the HTML file this time we have both buttons and we can play and pause the video so let's have a look back at our list of things we know we can play it we can pause it but I also want to know exactly where I am within the video so if we have a look down here at the properties that we can get from this video we will see the current time property that will actually tell us the current playback position in the video in seconds let's see if we can add that to the Opus page let's create a text box and I need a video uh, sorry I need a variable to store that information in so I'm going to use my time which will be a page variable and of number format now obviously as the video progresses this variable is going to need to be updated so the best way of doing that is to use a ticker trigger and I'm going to add it to the page now we've looked at ticker triggers before in one of the lessons so if you're not quite sure how to use it I suggest you go back and review that lesson I'm going to set it to one tenth of a second and again I'm going to pick a standard Opus script action now we need to assign let's drag that down so you can see we need to assign the current time from our video to that variable so I'm going to use my time equals and we need to get the video object again which was v1 we need to get the HTML5 video object which was video element and this time we actually need that property that we saw on the previous page which is current time and I'm going to do one last thing to it and I'm going to use a function called to fixed and I'm going to put the number 2 and basically what that will do is it will convert the big long number of the current time into a nice small two decimal place number you don't have to use it but it will just keep it nice and neat and I'm going to go to OK and I'm going to republish and I'm going to refresh the web page because it's still open and you can see that we have the time there in seconds and if I click play the timer will change as the video plays forward now obviously there are lots of other properties and some functions that you can use and I'll let you explore those at your own leisure if we go back to Opus just for one last moment the only other thing to say is that obviously here we've attached the script to a button but you can actually put this script on any other trigger or object that you like so for example you could add it to a timeline and control your video on a timeline or on a paid show or pretty much any other way that you would normally use a script object within Opus we hope this has been useful thank you very much for watching